Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John Diard. Welcome to LifeSpa.com. We prove the ancient medical wisdom of Ayurveda with modern science. And today I want to talk about a scalloped tongue, sometimes called a rippled tongue, sometimes called a crenated tongue, sometimes called a pie crust tongue. The official name for it is called lingula indenta, which means that you have teeth indentations on the side of your tongue. It's a rarely a serious condition, but it does have some significance and you want to look into it. If you have a scalp tongue, there are deficiencies that are directly linked to a swollen tongue where you're going to then bite down on that tongue and create this scalloping effect on the side of your tongue. In Ayurveda, it oftentimes means a lack of good absorption or assimilation of your nutrients. Well, that does make sense because there are deficiencies that have been studied to be directly linked to causing a swollen tongue and therefore, as a result of biting on a swollen tongue, a scalloped tongue. Vitamin B12 and all of the B vitamins for that matter, which means are you getting enough servings of your fruits and your vegetables, your leafy greens? That's where you're gonna get your B vitamins. Your vitamin B12 is commonly, it's a deficiency that affects 40% of the population. If you're taking any medication, that can actually block your stomach acid and cause an inability to make a protein in your stomach called the intrinsic factor, which absorbs B12 and delivers it into your bloodstream. But if you don't have that good stomach acid, your digestion is off, you're on antiacids or any other medication, it could possibly be blocking your B12 and that could be causing assimilation issues of that B12 and cause a swollen tongue, a burning tongue, and then then of ultimately scalloped tongue. Iron deficiency is also a factor that can cause a swollen tongue and ultimately a scalloped tongue as well. And this is a common thing. Number one deficiency on the planet is a iron deficiency. And the storage form of iron is called ferritin. And very few doctors test ferritin, but I gotta tell you, if you're feeling fatigued and tired and lethargic, low energy, get your ferritin levels tested when you go to the doctor because there are studies that show that your iron levels can be fine, but your storage levels, could, your ferritin could be low and give you the same symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. And it's common, particularly with women. In one, in one study, it showed that 20% of all women are deficient in, but in iron. 50% of pregnant women are deficient in iron, and 30% of menstruating women are deficient in iron. And this is really important for women and young girls, teenage girls who run track or are very physically active. Um, they can very quickly become deficient in their ferritin reserve. So most track coaches will have their female athletes get their tested for ferritin on a regular basis because it's such a, such a common thing. So be aware of that. Dehydration can cause a lack of electrolytes that can cause your tongue to swell and that also can cause um, a, a scallop tongue where you're biting on the tongue. So you wanna make sure you're not overhydrating by drinking a lot of water. In fact, it's sort of weird because you can't overhydrate you, you can't really overhydrate because water isn't the greatest hydrator. The electrolytes in the water is the hydration factor. And most people, when they're drinking lots and lots of just water all day long, they're drinking more water than they should. It can bypass the digestive system and actually create a, a state of dehydration. It's gonna wash out your minerals and your electrolytes. So it's important that your urine color not be crystal clear color, it should be a straw color which is really important. If you're looking for a good hydration supplement, we have something called Clean Hydration, which has no fillers and all the added stuff, just the electrolytes with a little bit of stevia that you can mix in your water to make sure you're getting those electrolytes, particularly if you're working out or during the summer months, it's really, really important. If you're looking for the best iron support for your iron deficiency issues, um, you wanna look for the bisglycinate form which is a form of iron that is a non-heme iron, but highly absorbable, particularly good for the ferritin reserves. Iron has two forms, right? Heme and non-heme. Heme is the animal source, which is really easily absorbed by us. That's why meat is such a great support of iron for folks. But non-heme is the vegetarian source. So you can have your choice. The one we carry is called ferritin boost, which is the non-heme form. And then there's also vitamin B12, which is always want to take that as a supplement 
uh, sublingually because it works just as good as the old-fashioned B12 shots. It bypasses your digestion. So if you're deficient in B12 and have a swollen tongue as a result of that or scallops on your tongue and you take the B12, you should get the happy energy pill very quickly and you should see your tongue beginning to stop swelling very in very uh, short order. And the last one is stress and anxiety. Um, stress and anxiety can cause a tight jaw, which can cause you to clamp down on your tongue. And I wrote an article about TMJ. Go to lifespa.com, type in TMJ. And there's a technique where you go in and you can release your pterygoid muscles, which is typically one of the foundational causes of TMJ, where the jaw just becomes super, super tight. And I teach you in that video how to actually get in there and release your... Um, pterygoid muscle, which is really terrible when it's super tight. Learn about that as another option for your scallop tongue as an indicator for some underlying problem. But also remember that a scallop tongue is also directly linked to sleep apnea and it's also directly linked to hypothyroid. So it's not, you know, something that you shouldn't worry about. You should kind of go through this article step by step. It's you know, at setlifespy.com with all the references that are there and just see if any of these deficiencies or indicators are relating to your concern about your scallop tongue. All right, hope that helps you. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Driard. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.